Preston Physics Grade 11 Waves and Sound Note 5 Resonance and Standing Waves When we're talking about resonance, we're looking at two objects. One's driven or has some sort of force, one's free to vibrate. Now the free object wants to vibrate naturally at the same frequency of the first object. This is why resonance occurs. So if you think of like rocking a car out of a ditch or singing into a wine glass enough to make it break, what's happening is the second object, the object that's vibrating, starts vibrating at that same frequency and building up more and more energy. This is energy building in the system, and then for the wine glass, it can't take that energy. For the car that's stuck, it has enough energy to overcome the ditch. You can also look at like pushing a swing as an example. So you have two objects, You've got a little boy who's going to be pushing the swing, so we're going to talk about the boy's arms. And then the second object would be the swing. So we'll go ahead and draw this. You have your little swing here. And then you've got your boy who's going to have two arms, and they're going to be pushing forward and back and forward and back. And so long as the boy's arms move at the same rate, the swing will get higher and higher. The energy in the swing increases because the frequency stays the same of the boy as he's putting energy into the system. The next thing we're going to look at are called standing waves. Now for this we're going to have four diagrams and we're going to color code it. We're going to have incoming waves which are going to be blue outgoing waves which are going to be red and what we actually would see are going to be the black waves so they're actual waves now if you notice our diagrams we have one end that's open and one end that's a fixed end so when the waves get to this they're going to stop and go back the other way so we're going to send an incoming wave down the line towards the fixed end it would get all the way down and then it would reflect back. It would actually reflect back in the same way that it went down because of the fixed end. So it reflects back. What's going to occur here though is we're going to get that wave go all the way down. That's our incoming wave. And then the wave's going to reflect back and it's going to go all the way back. We're drawing it the same way, but really it's reflecting off the fixed end. And what we're going to get is a whole bunch of supernovae. So we're going to see these big waves, but that actually alternates with something. So we send our wave down and we keep sending the same wave down, but our reflection back actually flips. So what we see here are a whole bunch of nodes. So we would see a flat line, then a bunch of super crests, a flat line, a bunch of super crests, and they alternate back and forth. And we'll demonstrate this in class so you'll have a better idea of what's going on. Now when we're drawing standing waves, since it would make no sense to just draw a flat line, we normally just draw the super crest because we can actually see them. And remember, they're going to actually alternate which direction they go in. So if we look at this, and it's going to alternate between the solid line and the dotted line. But if we look at this and we say, how many wavelengths are there here? Well, if you look at it, it doubles itself. So once I get back to that middle point, it starts to repeat itself. So we have two wavelengths. So looking at this diagram, there's two wavelengths drawn. Another way to find out how many wavelengths there are would be to count the number of crests and divide it by two. Let's look at the example where we have a kid watching a clown crack a whip. Now this one's a little bit harder because we don't have a fixed end here. Now the kid sees four crests when she's looking at this whip. So if we draw that, we've got one, two, three, and now we flip it over and that's our fourth there. Now if we're counting the wavelengths here, we count one, two, three, four crests, but we actually don't have two full wavelengths here. We've got one and then it starts repeating itself, but we don't have a full next one because it doesn't actually come back down to the middle because there's not a closed end. So we've got 1 plus 3 quarters, so the number of wavelengths is 1.75. Now in the next two parts, we're looking for the length of the wavelength 
and for the frequency that the wave's happening. For the length, all we have to do is take the length of the total rope, divide it by the number of wavelengths there are, and we get the length. It's 2.28 meters. For frequency, we use our universal wave equation of V equals F lambda. We rearrange it for F equals V over lambda, and we substitute our numbers in, which are 12 divided by 2.8, and we get 5.25 hertz. Some of the concepts in this note were a little bit more difficult, so we will talk about it and use some examples tomorrow in class. The questions associated with this note are 11 to 13 in your yellow duotangs.